Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. You see everybody traveling, you see everybody experiencing the world, and you are in a position to consider moving overseas for a short while or a long while, then maybe part of you that is exploring the idea of living somewhere else, but you are shit scared. <laughs> How do you deal with this? Well, myself, as an Australian that now lives in Iceland for on and off for seven years, as well as having traveled most of my life, and as a child, I lived in Australia, and then for six years, I was also in Poland. So I have some experiences of leaving home behind in order to start a new reality, new world, new adventure in other parts of the world. So I'm going to give you some little bits of advice and nuggets of wisdom. Maybe not even advice. I don't like giving people advice. I like to share experiences that I've had because it is my own truth. And, and in general, it's really hard to know what the truth is. And as Blue, my friend says, I don't know what the truth is, but I know what love feels like. And me sharing my own experiences is coming from a place of love. And take it or leave it is what I'm trying to say. As with these sit down videos, I'm trying to not edit them as much as possible, just so we can have a one on one discussion, just friends sitting down chatting over a cup of tea. So if you don't have a cup of tea, neither do I. Well done. <laughs> I remember being 17 and I could not wait until I finished high school um, at the age of 18 so I could go traveling. And I had this vision, this idea of me going solo traveling for a very long time before I turned 18. As soon as school was done, I was out of there. Now, mind you, I was living in a beautiful place in Australia next to the beach. My house had ocean views, not close ocean views, but far away views. But we were living in one of the best houses I've ever lived in. This was the highlight of my childhood homes. I think I had about 3000 of childhood homes because we moved so much. But this home in particular was heaven. So this idea of me leaving and wanting to leave so desperately was kind of strange because I did have the perfect setup where I was. It was a small town. I just felt the need to travel and I felt the need to solo travel. So I ended up um, applying to be a volunteer at an outdoor education center in Canada, which I ended up getting um, and I was there for six months. I raised money for this thing. I had to raise, I think, a total of $12,000. <laughs> so my family helped me a little bit. But I don't know if my family donated money to me. No, I don't think so. They helped me to raise money. And then I was working and saving money. Then I was asking for grants from different organizations in the area. And I think my family ended up buying gear for me. So they never gave me money as such, but they um, provided assistance for me to leave. And I'm only just sharing that piece of information because how hard it was for me to actually travel overseas and live overseas uh, for six months in Canada. I had to raise a lot of money to make that even happen. Whereas now there is a lot of organizations where you can apply online and find places to just buy a ticket and then they feed you, they house you, all these volunteer organizations. So the world has become a little bit more accessible for those that have less funds or less availability to come up with funds. So my adventure started when I was fresh 18 and I ended up going, as I said, to Canada for six months. And it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I also had the ability and initially the organization wanted to send me to Malaysia, but I didn't want to go there for some reason. I was so set on Canada. It was the most certainty I've had in this desire than most things that I want to do in my life. How different my life would have panned if I ended up going to Malaysia, which now, honestly, I think I would have chosen Malaysia. But I think as a first time solo traveler, I needed um, safety and comforts because I was nervous. Uh, so that was my first adventure of solo travel. And it was easy because I got picked up at the airport. I ended up staying in this place that housed me. And it was a very slow introduction to so solo travel. Whereas, you know, some people are like, just book a hostel and just go. That's scary, actually. That there is an aspect of that existence that is scary. Or book a hotel and just peace and see what happens. If you're really brave, by all means. But having a safety cushion to land on when you get to a new country, when you're solo traveling or wanting to relocate is great. So, yeah, if you want to have a job lined up when you get there, go to a place, do that in advance. Like if you need a safety cushion of some sort, find out if there's a way to get something like that in advance. Now, you might have a country of choice that you want to live in and you start applying for jobs or accommodation or volunteer positions and you get rejected. Now, 
maybe the universe is guiding you instead to go to a different place. Yes, have the vision of where you want to go, but also be open-minded that you might have to have a stepping stone to get you to the country that you want. For example, I live in Iceland. There's a lot of people that, because of people like me and my friends that promote Iceland, they're like, oh my God, I want to go live there. It's hard. Volunteer positions here are very difficult, if non-existent, like very limited. Um, getting jobs here is very difficult for foreigners um, because Icelandic people kind of come first unless you want to work cleaning hotels or something, but it's hard. So this might not be a place that you can get a job initially or accommodation initially. So um, maybe somewhere in Europe and then you can save up, get experience and then move up to a different country. So safety cushion when you're first moving or traveling is pretty nice. And then that was my very first experience and I wanted to touch on that feeling because that is my very first travel experience as a independent young woman going by myself to the other side of the world, Australia to Canada. And that was a very pivotal moment for me because just by going on that adventure, my confidence to travel elsewhere increased drastically. So much. Uh, because the next following years, I, you know, after nine months of travel, I ended up spending three more months in Europe. So came back to Australia, um, then moved to a different city away from my parents. And again, this is a confidence muscle that was built up. I moved away to a different city. And yes, I again landed in safety, which was to live with my sister. So she was my safety cushion for me to land living and operating as an adult in a brand new city. So I found a safety cushion once again. And I was glad to have a safety cushion both times that I organized these for myself. Like, yeah, you can be brave, but you can also have a safety cushion. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with that. If it's going to help you make a move, there is nothing wrong with having and uh, giving yourself, granting yourself assistance. So I ended up living in a different city, which was Sydney. Um, I grew up in Sydney, but then I left to go and live in Ballina, Australia. Um, but yeah, came back, lived with my sister. This is where I started working bar jobs, started to work on my businesses, um, try, well, trying to do businesses. I wasn't very good at business yet. And learning to adult, I suppose. Hello, my name is Sir Lamour, and I am a free human. Therefore, I do absolutely nothing but recline and relax at all times. So... With the spirit, I'm going to do my job <laughs> and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace from the comfort of my own home. I actually can't eat this grape because my face is stuck. <laughs> Squarespace is a magnificent tool for business owners, free humans and artists like myself to build a beautiful online presence that actually gets the results. Let me tell you about some of the incredible features of Squarespace such as the new editing interface. This is a game changer, it makes your site so customizable. Therefore, it can suit your needs completely. With Fluid Engine's flexible grid, place blocks anywhere, even overlapping other blocks, and resize them directly on the page. Of course, there's the Unreal 24-7 customer service that comes with Squarespace, as well as the award-winning designer templates that make you look professional, even if you do not have an eye for design. Plebs! <laughs> <laughs> you do also have the complete marketing tools, including email management, top analytic tools to track the performance of your web page to continue refining and improving the results of your business in real time. Squarespace hosts your content seamlessly, text, videos, and photos, of course, but also audio blocks can be inserted in case you're a podcaster, for example. Excuse me, plane, do you not see that I'm making an ad? Shh. And this is just a few of the amazing features of Squarespace. So therefore, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Sorel, that's my name, <laughs> to get 10% off your first website or domain. Obnoxious Sorel is out. Ah, oh, never mind. During this time, the traveling bug was already instilled in me. And so I ended up being able and having the confidence to then start traveling solo for shorter period of, periods of time. The majority of my money I ever made, it was either saving it 
or travel. I didn't have money for anything else. I I was, I ate on a budget. I'd go to farmer's markets and buy things cheap as chips at the end of the day when they were closing. Um, and they'd have bags of food that they were like, well, if we don't sell it now, we're going to have to throw it out. So I'd like really budget my food. I was so strict with my saving because all of it was designated for saving it and growing my wealth or travel. And so I'd end up working, you know, four, four-ish bar jobs, um, and studying, sorry, I forgot I was studying um, business major in marketing at a university at this stage. And in my time off, I think every year since I came back from my nine month trip away, I believe every single year after that, I'd go away for at least one month. And some years for the next five years, I'd go away for three months. Even when I had, even when I got my big girl panties on and I ended up getting a marketing job for um, two years, that was the only job I ever had working for somebody else. And um, I just negotiated that I was going to go away. I don't know. I was really lucky. My boss adored me and I was like, hey, I got to go for three months again. He was like, okay, fine. (laughs) It was really lucky. Um, It was a small ish company that everybody kind of felt like a family. And I just went away and I traveled during this time. And those small experiences of going away and then falling in love with the act of just booking a one-way ticket to Poland or to Europe, because I have a a Polish passport so I can travel anywhere in Europe. It's, yes, very privileged. But I travel from Australia. And if you're an Australian, you understand that we travel for long periods of time. We don't often go for short periods if we're going all the way to Europe because it is so long. So that's why my trips were so long because I wanted to maximize my time away. Um, I hope this is making sense, by the way. I'm like, this is this is kind of confusing going all the way from like, then this happened, then this happened. <laughs> I hope it's enjoyable. But I've, there, there needs to be back stories to this, okay? So... My way of traveling for those one month to three month periods was for me to uh, have a small bag. I didn't take that much with me and it was a backpack. So I was an actual backpacker and I would buy a one way ticket to Europe, booking the first one or two nights at a hostel that was highly reviewed online, safe. Um, usually I think I'd book in for, to female dorms only, uh, which is funny enough, the only time ever in my whole life that I'd have had anything stolen was in a all female dorm. I had my makeup and my shoes stolen by a woman that I know who, who did it and she definitely needed it more than me. So I'm okay with that. Um, and landing in those hostels and having a very clear like map of like, okay, I land at this airport and then there's a train uh, that will get me there. And then I just have to do the small walk to get to the hostel. I'm fine with that. So I had it mapped out before I even left. And from those big cities, because I didn't go to like some, I, like, I was safe. I was, I was keeping myself safe during these travels. I would land during the day, not at nighttime. And then I would have everything mapped out. I wouldn't go to some dodgy cities by myself. I went to more safer places to travel. Um, But having just the one or two nights booked gave me the flexibility to choose to do whatever I wanted to at the spare of the moment, which is probably where I get my spontaneous nature from still now. Or maybe because I was so spontaneous, I didn't want to book too much in advance because I still book things very last minute. I am that person. (laughs) I just want to know what it feels like in the moment who I'm going to meet where I might go because hostels are like the breeding ground for meeting amazing people and I can make a different video on how to meet people but um, I'm a social butterfly really so that kind of comes down to that it's like well I, I just want to know people's stories and that's so me talking to people is so fun and it's really natural to me also knowing that there's a space for introverts in hostels and during travels because people are also introverted. Um, so finding your, cr- your, your crowd in a hostel is very doable. Um, and if not, you also have to be okay with the idea of traveling by yourself. Like, okay, you land in a hostel, you don't meet anybody, kind of sucks. All right, get my little map out, which used to be a map and not a telephone <laughs> and not, not Google Maps. And I would just go and I'd be like, okay, I want to see this. So I'd 
total off. I wouldn't even know the destinations that I'd want to visit when I went to the country until I was there and I started Googling things. Um, it's just how my brain worked. I was like, I don't really care about knowing the, about the country until I get there. And then I want to study what's around, what's interesting. Unfortunately, this, this way I did miss visiting a lot of very important things in countries because I didn't know about those things until I left and someone was like, oh, did you go here? And I was like, didn't know it existed. <laughs> um, so that's how I traveled. And then this is the big thing that I think a lot of people want to know about, which is moving overseas. And so what happened? I was 25 and uh, living my best life. I had my twin flame. He called himself my twin flame. I had the best job in the world. I was working in a job that I actually, I was volunteering. No, I was an intern in a photography studio that I actually really loved. It was so fun. And at the same time, you know, my house I was living in was pretty nice. Um, and I started working at the time as a videographer. I became a photographer, videographer at the same time <laughs> and just went full steam ahead on that. I ended up making the most money as this corporate videographer, filming testimonials and live events. And it wasn't the funnest, I'll say, but I loved it because I was getting paid so much money for me at the stage. Oh my gosh. I was working 16 hour days editing these videos <laughs> and it was insane, big hours, but I was making so much money and things were just going so well for me. And then, hey, Sorel, you're 25. What would happen if you get stuck in Australia and you don't live in Europe as an adult because yeah that's your dream of yours you know you've lived in Europe as a child but what about living in Europe as an adult what if you find someone that you want to settle down with in Australia and then you settle down and then you'll never live in Europe that would be a bit of a loss of a dream wouldn't it <laughs> so that was my intuitive hit that just went stabity stab stab when I was least expecting it what a freaking bummer because my life was on track everything i wanted was on track why on earth dear intuition do you have to ruin it for me now no this little voice inside my head you stupid stupid so i tried to ignore it for a while and it was too loud i couldn't i couldn't get rid of it and so eventually I had to give in to that voice and I, I was so scared. Oh my gosh, it was so scary. The voice first started and then I was like trying to deny it. And then I think the when I finally re realized I can't deny it anymore and my in intuition took over was when I was, I don't watch TV very much. I've told this story before, but I was sitting there on the couch. My friends were like watching The Bachelor. And uh, th this chick comes on and she was like, my favorite place in the world that I've ever been to is Iceland. And I don't know, after months of pondering to go to Europe or not, I got up out of my the couch, went to my room and I bought a one-way ticket to Europe, knowing that I was going to end up in Iceland at some stage. <laughs> really weird. What the heck? I don't know. I just did it. <laughs> Brave little soul-ish. Because then the flight came and it went. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing it. I'm moving. And then as the dates were getting closer, I was like, no, 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 no. I cannot. No, 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 no. So I had panic. Not panic. I don't want to. Now that I know what panic attacks feel like, that wasn't a panic attack. But anxiety was so high before leaving. Three months in total of me being like, I can't I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm packing up my life. And I'd, I'd be packing my boxes in my room and I'd be like, why am I bawling, crying? I'm like, why am I doing this? What is wrong with me? My life is so perfect. Why am I doing this? I'm leaving my friends behind. <laughs> like, I literally, I couldn't, I was doing the action of getting myself forward towards this intuitive hit and my dream, really. But I was so scared. And my, my rational mind was trying to take over, but I was still doing the actions of getting me there. So... Um, yeah, feel the fear, but do it anyway is really where I was at. 
<laughs> and so yeah anyway the date came and I just I was like I can't do it I can't do it so I ended up um, not taking that flight which was a lot of money for me and I'm pretty sure I asked my dad at the time I was like dad I can't like I can't take this flight I'm too nervous uh, I have to let it go uh, can you help me out and help me book another flight like later on I just need an extra month please 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 um, and he I think I believe he was the one that actually ended up buying my ticket to Europe for me I believe thanks dad so I ended up taking the next flight except with <laughs> even wilder story so whatever storytelling I know it's a long time but this is the full story and these are my sit down videos that apparently you guys like so if you like it make sure you uh drop a little comment so i know and press a little like so i know because then i do more of them because if you don't like them then i don't do more of them and <laughs> the story so 11 p.m is the curfew for flights to take off in sydney australia after 11 p.m flights cannot take off so we're sitting at the airport my flight was really late i think i was meant to leave at 10 something like that and it just kept getting pushed back and back and back and um, I was like, wait, so oh, by the way, I'm crying this whole time. Like as I was going to the airport, I'm crying. My life was packed up. Everything's done. I left my twin flame. I'm like texting him like, why am I doing this? This is so stupid. And I'm texting and crying and it's 10 o'clock, 1030, 1045. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's almost a curfew. We're almost not going to be able to take off. And when the, we started getting cold onto the plane, they were like, ladies and gentlemen, the curfew is 11 p.m. We have to get on the fl flight now. Do it as fast as possible. No stragglers. If we don't make it at 11, we cannot go and we'll have to push back to 11. So everybody, efficiency galore. Everyone's like, Phew! onto the flight. <laughs> Gets on the flight. We're all ready to go. And I remember texting my twin flame guy and, and being like, if, and thinking to myself, if this doesn't take off, um, today and I have to wait till tomorrow I know that's a sign from the universe that I'm not meant to go so that gave me this like safety blanket to be like okay I can step on the plane even though I don't want to my body does not want to go my desire my dream is still there but my body does not want to make this move so by getting on the plane and knowing that if I don't take off it's a sign for me to stay it was a safety blanket and so I get on the plane 11 p.m hits I was like you're kidding me. Meanwhile, bawling, crying still. Haven't been able to stop for like an hour. So scared. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going. We're not meant to go. 11.01, no update from anyone. I was like, wow, okay, I'm actually not going. This is insane. I can't believe this is happening. Crying, crying. 11.02. We take off mind blown because well we broke the curfew i think i have one of these things that really annoys me on my head but whatever we live with it a little hair flicky thing we take off the curfew is over but we still take off and the second we take off i stop crying <laughs> i stopped crying i was like ah, ah everything's great the weight of the decision of the stress of yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, was finally taken away from me. And the only thing I could do then finally was surrender to the adventure. And so I ended up landing in Amsterdam, Netherlands, and I spent a week there. I went to the hostel straight away. Um, I ended up meeting two cool dudes that were underneath my bunk bed and we ended up hanging out for a week, which funny enough, five or six years later, um, ran into this guy again, one of the guys, and he's dating my friend and I was like, Oh, wow that's such a small world <laughs> so wild so I land in Amsterdam I have I have this one week amazing so much fun and then like three days in or four days in because I only have this this few days left a uh, few days booked in Amsterdam knowing that I was going to book the next ticket somewhere else wherever it might take me I just go on to Momondo and I'm like okay where's the next place for me to um, travel to and Iceland pops up because who would have known Iceland trip uh, flights from Europe, especially Amsterdam to Reykjavik are actually very affordable. Little did I know that when you land here, it's not affordable. <laughs> but I, I, I was like, oh my gosh, the flight is so cheap. Yeah, I'm going. So I came for five days, booked into a hostel in Reykjavik, um, booked a car 
And I ended up just like exploring 2016, I think, maybe 2015 for five days. Day three, I'm bawling, crying. I was like, oh, this place is beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> and uh, I was like, how do I stay here? I want to stay here longer, but it's so expensive. I don't have enough money to stay here. Maybe I can get a job. So within like a few to three days, I started looking for jobs. The only thing I could find was uh, cleaning a hostel. A hotel and I will say my ego got the best of me and I was like fuck that <laughs> not doing it <laughs> so I ended up being there for five days only loving it and then I was like I, I want to stay here but I don't know how so I did end up getting on the flight back to um yeah Poland that I had booked I booked myself when I was in Iceland to go back to, to stay with my family in um Poland so I went, flew back, and ended up, strange meeting, yada yada, big story, but landed at the airport, met this dude that is Polish but lives in Iceland, knows some people that are living on this farm, it's called the Spirit Farm, and um, it's sometimes it takes volunteers, and I was like, oh, jackpot, I messaged them, and they were like, hey, we don't take volunteers, but if you pay this much, you can stay with us, and I was like, I just need one month, please, thank you so much. Anyway, two weeks later... I'm at the airport. My dad's about to drop me off um, at the airport to go to Iceland. And he's like, hey, just don't get stuck in Iceland, okay? Because there's nothing there for you. And I was like, dad, why would I get stuck in Iceland? That's stupid. There's nothing there. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I landed a week later. I met, uh, I fell in love with the country first, but then I met my, uh, met the man that became my partner for seven years. And we ended up building a life here together. And again, you know, having that safety blanket of a one month living in this hostel, uh, this uh, this farm was my way of being able to survive here on a budget because it wasn't too expensive. You know, they picked me up from the airport or I caught a bus or something. Anyway, it was affordable. And I had this like one month period of trying to work things out and see how things worked. And then, you know, meeting my uh, partner at the time, we ended up. He was my safety cushion. He'd been here for a few years prior to me and he knew things, how they worked. And it just built from there. So I think what the long story short is, is that you don't know who you're going to meet when you go traveling. You don't know how things are going to unfold. You can never plan these things. I had no clue on earth ever in my wildest dreams, not even for a split second, did I think that I was going to end up living in Iceland. This place does not make sense for me. It does not make any logical sense sense for me to be here. I'm a warm baby. I used to think I was a city baby. I am obsessed with the beach. None of this makes sense. Ended up being the place that is where I started my YouTube channel, where I ended up doing so many things that I, again, I could not write this if I tried. So it was the surrender to the universe whilst at the same time having this safety cushion of some sort whatever made me feel safest to make this transition work for me um because i just knew in my depths of my soul that i wanted to try this and i wanted to have a life that was worth writing about i just want to make my life to be a wild adventure that i could write about but not too wild i'll say that some people are like oh my god the craziest adventure i'm not even that wild i'm pretty reserved in a lot of ways to be honest so Yeah, I like my luxuries, I like my cushions, and I'm a bit of a princess sometimes. (laughs) But I have like these small-ish adventures that are still comfortable for me to execute. Um, But yeah, you, I could, if you think you're going to live somewhere, if you think your life is going to unravel in some way, that's great to have goals. Like my goal of being a YouTuber for five years before I started YouTube, it was there, that itch needed to be scratched. And um, so when I landed in Iceland and I had this time, I didn't have a job and I was like, what am I going to do with myself? Then I started doing the dream that I had, which was YouTube. And it ended up working for me, obviously. So you have these ideas of your life and keep them solid, but also have the flexibility to make life work with you. That's my advice on how to venture off and live somewhere else. There is a country that is on your list of like, hmm, I'd love to be there. 
it will take saving up and for some of you it would be easier for some of you it's going to be really difficult to save up to go there you might have visa situations so whatever restrictions you might have with your visas with your payment like find a country that suits your budget and your ability to travel whatever restrictions you have find freedom within those restrictions yes it's easier to say this but you have to work with what you got no one's going to change your life situation for you you're going to have to change it for yourself and if that's what you desire you have to be strategic and move around the obstacles that you yourself have presented in your life no one is going to get rid of them for you and it sucks is it fair no some people don't have obstacles nowhere near as you might have it freaking sucks but you've got this like you are humans are so adaptable to finding ways of making things work so research how people got started traveling or moving to a different country um, that are from your country how do they do it that's a great great starting point where is a great place for you to go from your own country that you could afford and you feel safe to go to um that's my advice uh th those are my words <laughs> I want to give advice thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this little sit down video again it's really fun to do these um, and i get to show off my cool secondhand clothing that i bought <laughs> slightly such a cool outfit i love it so much uh yeah let me know if any other further topics you'd want me to talk about it's all around the idea of like freedom expression art these are things that i truly love um so i'm here to be your little auntie sorel and support you on your journey wherever possible and remind you you are freaking awesome and you've got this. Mm, mm, mm. And when things get hard, mm, 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 which they will, mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. you've got this. I'll see you in the next one.